Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making some meatball parmesan subs. I went out in the garden and grabbed some herbs. We have a variety of basil, chives, and oregano in the small dish. And then in the white one we have some mint. We're going to use that for the sweet tea. We have some diced onion, minced garlic, and some chorizo that we're going to use as the base for our tomato sauce. Stay tuned. All right, now we're sauteing up the garlic, onions, and chorizo in a pan. And once the onions are translucent, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the meatballs, let them get a little bit brown on the uh, edges, and then we'll add some tomato sauce. It's a store-bought tomato sauce, the cheap kind. It's only like a buck a jar for 23 ounces, I think it is. I'll show you that in just a second. We're using mushroom flavored, and I'm not too worried about it being cheap sauce because, like I said before, we're going to go ahead and jazz it up with all these fresh herbs from the garden and additional seasoning. So by the time we're done, we'll be able to take that cheap jar of sauce and make it taste like I spent all day in the kitchen or spent a lot more money on it anyway. We're going to be cheating today just a little bit. We have these Italian meatballs that we got at the grocery store. It was two packages for six bucks. Can't beat that. It was a lot cheaper, believe it or not, to buy the meatballs pre-made than to go ahead and buy the meat in bulk and do it myself. Uh, I know that sounds crazy. Normally it's the other way around, but that's how it worked out this week. So that is exactly what we're going to do, is just take these pre-packaged jobbers and uh, use them to make our meatball parm subs today. I'm just going to go ahead and plop them in. Well, maybe. Looks like they're stuck to the container. Right. The meatballs are in there now. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of iodized salt. I'm not adding any additional pepper because the chorizo should add enough heat and we don't want to overpower it. We're also going to go light on the salt because chorizo tends to be a little salty sometimes. Now that the meatballs have gotten a good sear on them, I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, ragu. That was what was on sale this week. Mushroom flavored. It's uh, kind of smooth. It says rich and smooth, but by smooth I mean thin. Kind of less than marinara um, thickness, I would say. And I usually thin it down a little bit more with water to make sure I get everything out of the jar. And then I let it simmer and it'll thicken back up as it simmers, especially with the add-ons that we threw in there. We're going to put this sauce in there, throw in the herbs, and then I'm going to turn the heat down and let it simmer for maybe 10, 15 minutes, we'll say. And as you can see here, I've put the water in the jar, shaken it up, and as you can see here, it does take out a lot of the uh, sauce that normally sticks to the jar. And we're just gonna go ahead and pour that into our pan. first before we turn it back down to simmer. Just a light boil. So we're going to set it to medium and then uh, put it to low simmer. For the base of our meatball parm sandwich we're going to go ahead and use this Italian bread. I did not bake my own uh, because this was on sale too. It was $1.50 so it saved me some time. You can see it's dark on one side but they didn't uh, make it brown enough on the other, but that's okay because we're going to slice them into manageable sections, enough to hold two to three meatballs each, and then we're going to warm them up in the oven. So give it a little toast with some cheese and garlic, with some cheese and garlic butter. So it shouldn't much matter that it's a little light on the other side. And as you can see, like I said, it was only about 50 for the bread. Now to slice the bread, I'm going to be using my Wusthof bread knife. I love this bread knife. It works very well uh, when it comes to slicing the bread. So well, like I said, we'll slice it in little portions and then slice it across. Now to make sure I have even portions, I take the first one that I cut and then I use that as a guideline. I'm going to go ahead and continue down the rest of the loaf. All right, bread sliced. As you can see, I overshot my mark by a little bit. And then I cut the center. Now I did not cut all the way through the sides, as you can see. I've made it like it has uh, I've made it into a little pocket, and that's where we're going to stuff our meatballs, cheese, and sauce once it's finished. We'll just toast it just like this, 
and I've done it before and it'll actually come out great, you'll see in just a moment, we'll be using a pizza stone as the, uh, we'll be using a pizza stone instead of using the rack or a pan. Uh, the pizza stone will give a nice color on both sides. You'll see that in just a minute. All right, while the sauce is cooking down, we're gonna go ahead and work on making our uh, iced tea, mint flavored iced tea for dinner. I've got the fresh mint from the garden. I'm going to go ahead and chop it up in my little mini food processor. Throw some sugar in there into the water. We're going to nuke the water, get it nice and hot so the sugar dissolves. Then I'm going to take the ground up mint leaves and put it in my little uh, tea steeper. Ah! Tea steeper. And um, throw that into the boiling water and let the mint essence of the mint infuse itself into the tea mixture. All right, we've got the bread in the oven. We have our iced tea chilling in the fridge, and I am checking the temperature on our meatballs. The ones that we're having today are a mixture of pork and beef, so I'm looking for an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit, and it um, doesn't look like we're quite there yet, so got a little bit longer for them to cook. 